Hi everyone, this is Deborah Gardner. Welcome to Hospitality Today. Hi again, this is Deborah Gardner. I'm your show host at this time for a brand new show right here online. And we are just so thrilled to have this opportunity to produce this here for you and, and everyone because we want to advocate for the hospitality industry and we so appreciate you being here with us today. We have a lineup of guests throughout the entire year already into 2021. So you're not going to be bored. You're not going to be without a great guest on the show. And I just want to let you know that this, again, is just a thrill to be here with each and every one of you. We are building a new studio. So for now, welcome to my home. And I hope you enjoy today's broadcast. So what I want to do now is I want to bring in our very first guest. So let's get going. Here she is, Misa. Hi. Hello. How are you? And thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, everyone, I, if you don't know Misa, let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, she is the, the all-time veteran of this industry for about 30 years, mainly in hotels like myself. And I, I just adore her because not only on a, as a professional, but as a a personal friend as well. She's just been doing great with her business. It's a, a, a meeting planning and travel company um, and conference management. She does that as well. She does a little of everything, but she's based here in Arizona like I am as well. And she's been very involved with the community from MPI, HSMAI, um, ASAZ, even um, RCMA, and she's been with women groups as well. But she is the president and chief officer, executive officer uh, Morrissey and Associates. So again, welcome. Welcome so much. And I'm glad you're here. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit more about you? Thank you so much. Well, um, one of the biggest things for myself in this organization is to really promote travel, travel within our industry, um, whether it's domestic or international. One of the biggest things is a lot of folks just don't have time. They don't have time to put together the event or to um, actually run an organized event or meeting or conference, retreat, gathering, whatever that may be. So one of the biggest things for us is we want to become part of your team. And to become part of that team, we work independently or in with an established team. And our biggest thing is we want to be part of an organization's travel process. So it's not just that one-off program, which we are happy to do, but it's really to work on everything and to be that total partner. So we can mitigate any type of financial issues. We can reuse the location, say dates don't work. Anything along those lines to really be that travel perfect partner. So um, through the years, we've gone from just Kind of doing that research and negotiation to encompassing the entire aspect of travel whether it's your vip that needs a chartered plane um, or pilots that need to go on that flight for the vip going to las vegas for a conference or a a very quiet meeting because of a merger so whether it's that one-off in regards to your president or vice president or going on to a larger annual conference, we want to be that conduit so that we're with you at all times. Well, that sounds amazing. It seems like you're just a, a jack of all trades. You're doing so much for the industry and have been so successful at it. And I know you've also been very involved and, and staying in touch with and on top of uh, the guidelines that are going on right now. You know, EIC came out with their best practice guidelines. Uh, you notice that a lot of different hotels from Hilton, who has what, you know, the Hilton event ready is what they call it. You've got Four Seasons, Lead with Care. You've got Accor is all safe. You've got, you know, Walt Disney. And, and you even have Marriott. And I, I believe you're really staying on top of them, just, just like the Marriott brand as well, right? Absolutely. And part of this whole process and with COVID, it's really pushed our hospitality community to that next level. So learning how to go through that hospitality process and 
not to say the word hospitality too many times, but what's really important is, is we've always been that one-to-one connection and how to make the experience of travel to be as intimate and as as um, comfortable as possible, now we're kind of distancing ourselves. And that distance is because of COVID-19. So whether it's the um, check-in process where now it can be completely remote, or it becomes a process of the hotels really assisting with the cleanliness aspect, from walking through those doors, through the check-in process, getting onto that escalator or elevator, and into that guest accommodation. So everyone in our hospitality community has really worked strenuously to ensure that the general public really feels comfortable to come back into our industry and to feel safe. So I have to say that the hotels, the hotel management companies, the Marriott's, the Hilton's, the Hyatt's, the Acors, they have really done a tremendous job in regards to keeping everyone safe, their employees, as well as all of the guests from an individual level, all the way through that process, they really have a great pull through to the meetings aspect and how to really come back into our own with the policies and procedures in place for safety. So they've all done a a magnificent job. That's great. That's great to hear because that is one of the most important things that you and I and guests and attendees need to know about. Is there anything in particular that you have? I mean, you've been planning meetings, right? I mean, you've been still, you haven't really stopped uh, like majority of us. I'm, I'm this unemployed speaker right now, but uh, I, I know that it's been really tough on our industry um, tremendously. And there's been a lot of statistics and reports out there, which, we don't need to go into because we know what is going on. But it sounds like you have really stayed with the game, stayed up there. Is there is there anything particular that maybe one hotel was able to stand out for you that they did that made a difference to you and your attendees? Well, I have to say, right at this moment, we actually did have a nonprofit event in August. And there was a lot of concern in regards to how are we really going to move forward through this process. So um, the, the property that I'm speaking of right now is the Arizona Grand Resort in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So we actually had about 75 people and they were tremendous in regards to allowing us to take over over 4,000 square feet of space to ensure again that we're having that distance. Um, the check-in process, they had all of the plexiglass as well as um, a way for us to check in without ever having to have any contact with any of the employees. What was fantastic is is the fact that when I went to them and said, I really want us to follow the the CDC guidelines as well as the EIC guidelines in regards to having everyone come and be safe. And they were extraordinary in regards to ensuring that everything was placed at the end of each day. And that in the morning, we then took over the space And I was able to go in and make sure that all of the Purell stations uh, for hand sanitizing were where they needed to be. They have doors for the bathroom facilities that are a non-touch. So you can basically sort of use your elbow and not have to touch the doors, as well as having everything readily available within all the restroom um, areas. So they did follow those guidelines. The staff was tremendous in regards to ensuring that we had that communication as well as assistance without having anyone feel as though that they weren't safe through that um, six foot, seven um, foot process. And they also took the time to make sure that all of our delegates were in the same sort of area, but they placed us in every other room. So again, everybody had that um, distance and we could pre-order anything that we wanted in the guest rooms. So if someone needed extra towels or shampoo or any HBA products, they were actually delivered beforehand and that really helped us out as well. So the meeting space, um, and, and that's another thing, it's gonna cost more money, honestly, for the level of service that's taking place to sanitize throughout the day, the Purell stations, the, um, the tag sticks that say, you know, six foot reminders. 
So what's really great is the hotels are actually, they offered all of those um, nuances at no additional charge. So it's trying to keep us safe, trying to keep us, you know, in a stance so that we can come back into the industry. But there is really a cost for these hotels to do so. So, you know, that's something else that we as an industry really have to look at. And I see that coming down the pike. Well, you know, and I have to agree with you because, and I'm glad you brought that up because budgeting is is the number one thing going on with, with planners like yourself to see about how to go about that. And with no budget right now, it just makes it makes it tough. I mean, I've even heard that there's a COVID tax. Um, I remember back in the day when hotels had the energy tax, so it seems like everything repeats itself, and just like the history does. Uh, history does. But uh, do you do you find that? This is going to be a hinder, or is there some creativity that, that planners like yourself are doing? Well, right now we have been so fortunate that the hotels have actually taken on the cost. I mean, it does cost, you know, some some dollars in regards to keeping everything safe, the extra manors, the extra products. Um, the, the majority of the properties are using medically um, medical grade. Um, disinfectants, which again, um, when you look at the amount of cleansing that they're doing and the amount of staff to place on there, and they're running at, you know, 20, 30, 40, uh, 50% occupancy. And part of that is really because of mandates of where they're located. So they're not allowed to have more than X amount of people in their establishment because of the, the guidelines of their city and state. So um, I do see somewhere along the line some type of monetary charge. Um, I've seen it in restaurants already. It's a COVID tax. So I see it kind of tumbling in, just like right now we're seeing for the airlines. You know, they're trying to pull people in. So with that being said, they're getting rid of change fees. You know, they're getting rid of... Um, Fees if you want to do a standby and you don't have that elite status. Some right. folks that have that high level elite status are like, well, I give you all this business. That's my privilege. But right now at this day and time, we just need to get our country moving. And yeah. they're really trying to do everything in their power to bring us back, make us feel comfortable to take that step and start meeting again whether it's meeting our family or meeting for a conference, it's getting us back into the rhythm of where we were previously of getting on that airplane, going to that hotel. So further down the line, I do, I, I really do feel that there is going to be a cost associated with our new procedures that are in place. Someone has to absorb that sooner or later. Yeah. And in the meantime, what we all need to do in our industry, I believe is, is we all need to take responsibility and, and do our part and do our role on what really can you know can help the industry uh, because you and I know there's a lot of layoffs there's a lot of, um, of, of, of people trying to even get out of the industry and, and we don't want that to happen we want people to stay in this in this great industry that that we all you know love to, to work and play in. I mean, for 30 years, you and I, that's 60 years, <laughs> we, we know we can contest, <laughs> we can contest that this is a really great industry, but uh, and and this is not our first rodeo. We've been through these before. Um, however, this is a different beast, this is a different animal um, that really hit not only professionally but hit us at home too. And uh, we just need to, to, like you said, just, you know, make sure that this industry comes back. Um, but the only way to do that is, is be responsible, take care of your family, take care of, you know, those things that are important to you. Um, be responsible so that we can get back to, to the industry and, and get back to seeing each other face to face instead of like this, no doubt. But uh, I, uh, I wanted to find out, though, you know, in the interim of all of this, what have you been doing other than planning meetings, whether it's personally or professionally? Is there, these, I mean, really, if you think about it, December is about a year of us really hearing the first announcement, the end of December somewhat. So we're coming up on a year of this. Um, but we, you know, some meetings have come, some meetings are, are still happening. But what else have you been doing besides uh, planning meetings? Well, 
One of the big things that bothered me on a personal level was the fact that, you know, with us being in the industry for as long as we have been, we see some of our closest and dearest friends just struggling within our times right now. So for myself, I, I looked at some of the trends and we started a promotion and this was in April and we launched it and it was called the virtual passport. And the reason why we connected and did this virtual passport is because we wanted the general public to realize that, you know, you can still get in your car. And um, if you look at different, you know, avenues out there, they're saying that people are really comfortable traveling between an hour to six hours of their destination being home. So with that, we just try to engage that family, engage someone that wanted to kind of branch out a little bit, still do some travel within their their kind of comfort zone and introduce them back to the beautiful resorts and hotel properties that we have in Arizona. So we started this passport promotion and one of our first properties was the, um, the Hilton in the, Actually, it was the um, Poco Diablo Resort in Sedona. And it was really to just get people comfortable and saying, you know, we have so many great places within four hours drive to give them enough information. We gave them destinations to see places to go that they could feel comfortable and not get on that airplane, not be too far away from home. So we did this promotion for several months just to really get people familiar with what's around us. We don't have to really get on that airplane to see something gorgeous and beautiful within our own state. So uh, we started on Arizona first, but that was really to help our hospitality community and just get the word out there. We did the Arizona Grand as well. And um, the Embassy Suites got so we had it a plethora of properties to represent and actually represent to the general public to say, these are fantastic places to go. We know you're getting a little stir crazy at home as they were developing their um, safety pro protocols and procedures. So that was the part of it. And then on a personal side, I think for me, learning a little bit more of social media, learning how to make little snippets and videos. So um, that for me was really this was a great time for me to take that step back and say, what can I do to help myself so I can better assist my customers as well as get the information out from our properties. So for any and all properties that are out there that have promotions or um, specials that they would like to present to folks, please feel free to send them on to us because we would love to represent you to our customer and client base because at the end of the day, we have to help our own community. And without our partners, we don't have anywhere for them to go. So our hospitality peeps, they're the, they're the rock stars out there. Absolutely. And I understand you also uh, feature and, and represent speakers like myself. So, yes. <laughs> so again, you're, you're that one-stop shop. And uh, with all your experience and expertise, it makes a lot of sense. So besides your friends and family, who do you miss? What, 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 what do you miss the, um, most about the hospitality industry? It's really the connections because um, I finally had a chance to visit with Lisa Lewis with uh, ALHI Hotels. And it was because we had an event and we're actually looking at um, booking another program for 2023. And for me, not seeing our hospitality partners, it's, it's a struggle at times because we are really gatherers. We're not isolation people. We're, we're all about the hospitality and um, we're all about getting together and creating and making people feel happy and executing. And for us to just be separated as much as we have been through this process is, is a bit challenging. So for me, it's really missing my hospitality community, the sales managers, the directors, the event people. Um, that's really been a struggle, um, not having that one on one time, as well as, you know, our professional organizations and you know, being able to take that moment in time to spend with someone and say, how's your daughter? How's your son? 
So um, just catching up on people's lives. There's so much you can do, you know, on a, a Zoom conference or a teleconference, but just really being able to con connect in person. I really do feel that we are not individual people. We really are gatherers. We're, we like to be part of that community. And so for a lot of us out there, we struggle. We struggle because we're not with our, with our same-minded folks. Right, right. That is so true. Do you see uh, any anything in the future with our industry? I mean, prediction-wise, do you um, want to see something happen? Um, you know, we've, we've been listening to the industry leaders for a couple months now, um, but I always like to, to know what my hospitality peeps really think about predictions and what it looks like. You know, honestly, I don't think um, washing hands is going to go away. Um, I feel that a lot of the protocols that we have right now are probably going to stay in place for a while. Um, not sure about the middle seats with airlines, not, you know, booking someone in there. I think due to cost and because of um, budgets and the furloughs that have been going on in the the airline industry, that that really will not stay in effect as long as we would all like it to be. But um, a lot of the safety regulations that we have, you know, the distance, the washing hands, the sanitizing, the cleanliness of properties um, and venues, I don't think that that's really going to go away in the distant, in the not too distant future. Um, and part of it is really that we have to keep this a uh, virus um, away. And from my understanding, a lot of this is kind of back to the common cold, which is that COVID um, base of this virus. So we all have to do our part and that is to stay with washing hands. I don't think masks are going away in the, in the distant future. I think that we're gonna have something. So whether it be us all kind of coming together, the cruises are actually having this UV light. So um, people have to process through this UV light to gain entry onto a cruise ship. That might be something that we make standard into through the TSA process, or maybe it's added into the going into a general session or a breakout process. There's a lot of UV light technology that's coming out of this. There's a lot of sanitizing sprays that aren't as harsh coming out of this. So is it something that's actually going to completely go away? Absolutely not. There's going to be pieces of this that are probably going to stay with us into the future. Um, how that actually kind of looks is really going to be dependent upon what they come up with with a vaccine. Yeah, I think we really need to bank on that vaccine um, before anything happens. And uh, supposedly that's right around the corner. We don't know. But but uh, to your point of, of you know, still moving forward and, and doing things. And it sounds like you've been really busy, that's for sure. I, I always reflect back to the, the quote from uh, uh, Jim Rohn, who says, a week of neglect uh, results in a year of repair. And I love that quote because what we do now and how we take responsible for what we do within our businesses or, or in our daily life um, will reflect in a year. So we can't just stop and sit there and you know, on the couch and eat bonbons and watching soap opera. We've got to, we've right. got to continue to stay in contact. Like, like you said, um, it, it's very important to um, to keep moving forward. And, and I'd love to see our industry continue to do that for sure, for sure, definitely. So, is there any other thoughts that you'd like to share with everyone, uh, our hospitality peeps out there, or anything that? Um, We'd love to, to hear from you about. We know everybody needs to go to uh, to your website, uh, www.marsleytravel.com, because, of course, it expands beyond uh, hospitality. Um, to reach you uh, would be a definite, a definite thing that everybody needs to do. But if there's anything else, I, I certainly know that everybody would love to hear it. Well, first and foremost, I just wanted to say a thank you. Oh. Our hospitality community has really pulled together and individually have gone through so much strife in the last several months with furloughs and, um, you know, hotels just completely closing and they're reinventing themselves. And 
the positivity that has come from our industry and all of the associates that are in it, um, I, I just want to say thank you for all of that you have done because without your service, you are the backbone of what we call hospitality. So first, absolutely. So the first thing out there is just to say thank you so much and for your tenacity and figuring out ways to make your own owners and your own property, you know, look at you and say, wow, that was a great idea. Let's put that in place. It comes from the people that are one-on-one -on -one with those visitors. So first and foremost, Thank you, thank you, thank you, and know that you are not alone. Right. You know, this has affected everyone. And unfortunately, our travel world has affected the most. But know that we are going to rebound and that your efforts are so, so appreciated. Right. Right. And that, know that we are so grateful for you. That is so, so true. Everybody out there um, that continues to, to, you know, continue on and is, is, is key from the top of the leaders all the way down to to everyone that works directly inside hotels and, and any other venue or, or uh, avenue within the hospitality industry. And we know the hospitality industry expands out to so many different areas um, and it's, it's, it's huge. And other than the government, we're, we're the next in line as far as how many people and, and we wanted to come back. We wanted to all come back and it will and it will. It's just a matter of how it's going to come back. And you, you said a key word there, reinvention. And uh, I think it's time for us because it's not going to be the same at all. It doesn't matter what the meeting room looks like. It doesn't matter what the airport's going to look like. It's, it's all going to be different. And we all need to be very, very aware of, of that. And, and that's key. That is that is really key. So thank you for your um, service to this industry as well, Misa. You have been the backbone to to a lot of uh, great meetings and, and great clients and support for our industry and all the organizations that you have been involved in. So, and I'm glad that hopefully there's more people, more fans out there of yours that know about you now more than ever. And uh, I, I just know that uh, we're, we'll never retire in this industry. It's just too much fun and too, too many things, great things that are, that are happening here as well. So, um, but other than that, I, I see that, uh, we can definitely um, uh, say that that uh, we'll just can continue on. So thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Deborah. You are you are the apple of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and your daughter Bella certainly do too for us, for Jerry and I. So thank you so much for everything. Really appreciate you. You as well. And thank you all for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the first segment to uh, hospitality today. And as we grow and expand even more so, I know that you will really enjoy the upcoming guests as well. Next up, next Tuesday, we've got Mary Ann Barrow with Barrow and Associates. And we're going to talk about the restructuring of force majeure in contracts. So you are not going to want to miss this exciting episode next Tuesday. Until then, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again.